Hi, today I'm going to be sharing with you some research on using environmental variables to improve short-term forecast of the Indian oil sardine. This research is from a five-year collaboration between the Ministry of Earth Sciences and NOAA Fisheries that happened between 2014 and 2019. The research I'll talk about today will be using a quarterly landings time series collected by CMFRI. It was begun in 1956 and we'll be using data up to 2015. The data we'll be using is from Kerala where the majority of catches occur. Here's a view of the time series we'll be working with today. It's quarterly, as I said, you can see there's a fair bit of seasonal variation and there's also year to year variation. Today's talk will focus on the main results from the modeling regarding how environmental variables improved or didn't improve forecast. But in this short talk, there's a lot of details I'm going to be leaving out about the caveats about the landings data, all the details about the models, the oceanography, life history, all that. And I encourage you to take a look at our fisheries oceanography paper. It's open access. You can find the link at the top. Our main question for this paper was, can we improve catch forecast by adding environmental data to our models? Our strategy to tackle this question was to identify covariates that could affect catch based on sardine life history and catchability. So there are two basic ways that these covariates could affect the, the landings. It could affect abundance by affecting recruitment, survivability, somatic growth, or it could affect catchability. The fishery is a coastal fishery, so a covariate that drives sardines away from the coast or brings them closer to the coast would affect the landings. For the work you're going to see today, I'll be focusing on the data from the early 80s to 2015. This is the period in which we had our full component of environmental covariates. In the paper, you can um, see some work using the earlier data. I'll be dividing the catch into the monsoon catch, which is the July to September catch, and the post-monsoon catch, which is October to March. The majority of the catch is occurring in this October-March period. It's this dark line here. All right, so coming up with those covariates. This was a four-year process involving the Indian and U.S. oceanographers and the fisheries biologists reviewing 100 years of research on oil sardines and coming up with these, um, these specific hypotheses. The final set of covariates used in our analysis, which are mainly from remote sensing, but not exclusively, fall into these four areas. First, upwelling indices, during the summer monsoon, upwelling drives productivity, the chlorophyll blooms, and then subsequently the zooplankton blooms, but at very high levels leads to coastal hypoxia. Second, precipitation during the monsoon. This leads to high river discharge, which also brings in nutrients, but can lead to eutrophication and high coastal hypoxia. Third, the regional ocean temperature, the ocean temperature has physiological effects on growth and survival. And lastly, ocean cli climate indices. And these are correlated with a suite of environmental factors which have cascading effect effects on the entire lifespan of oil sardines. We now had a suite of environmental variables that were good candidates for impacting the landings. The next question is, all right, do these uh, variables improve catch forecasts? So first, to answer that, we have to ask, what do we mean by improve? Well, we defined improve as improve over a null forecast model. And this null model was forecasting this year's catch based on last year's catch. So pretty standard um, null model for uh, landings forecast. Next, we have to define how we're going to measure improve. We're concerned with forecasting, so we want to measure forecast errors. So not how well the model fits the data, but how well we can predict data that's not included in the model. We used a leave one out procedure, and this procedure creates a series of one step ahead forecasts 
from within the data set. And it's these one step ahead forecast errors that we're using to measure how well the model is doing. Our basic models were time series models, but they're a little bit different because they were also generalized additive models. What that means is that we modeled the catch as a function as a nonlinear function of prior catch and a nonlinear function of our covariates. Now in this um, equation here, um, just to make it simple, I just um, showed time here, but in fact, we explored covariates where we used the current a year, one year prior and two years prior. And there were some cases where we had also interactions. So let's take a look at the main results. The main result was actually kind of a negative result most of the covariates were uniformly disinformative. What does that mean? It means that including those covariates in the model led to worse forecast. This includes all the upwelling indices, most of the ocean climate indices, the seasonal sea surface temperature, any model with our covariate interactions, and any model that include a, a covariate from the prior years or two years prior. All of those were disinformative. And remember, our covariates were not chosen at random. This is very carefully selected for evidence that they would, in fact, impact the landings. Now, these covariates did improve model fit, but we weren't concerned with model fit. We were trying to get at model forecast. And this gets to this issue that um, estimating model parameters comes at a really high forecasting cost. This is something that's very well known. Nonetheless, there were covariates that did improve the forecast, reduce forecast errors, and there were three of them. One was the regional sea surface temperature over the sardine lifespan, the 2.5 year average regional sea surface temperature. This is very interesting because a number of other studies have also found that the multi-year average sea surface temperature is uh, predictive for sardines um, in other species. The second one was the monsoon precipitation over land. And the third one was the Atlantic multidecadal oscillation index. This was the only climate index that improved forecast accuracy. And I'll go into a little more detail into the three of these. I'm now going to show you a series of uh, plots that look like this. And what you're seeing here is on the x-axis, this is the effect of the covariate, and on, uh, sorry, on the y-axis is the effect, on the x-axis is the covariate. If it's below this line, the covariate had a negative impact on catches, and if it was above, it had a positive impact. So let's start here. So this is the first one, this is the 2.5 year average sea surface temperature. And it showed this pattern where there was a threshold effect and below an average um, sea surface temperature of around 28.4 Celsius is a negative impact on catch and then above that a positive. And it's kind of um, seems to kind of flatten, flatten off. This is the same pattern that, was, that has been seen with sea surf, average sea surface temperature for Pacific sardine, this kind of flattening shape. In that case, they're looking at recruitment. And you can see this with the October catch also, kind of the same sort of pattern there. The second covariate that improved forecast was precipitation over land. And these uh, effect figures show what's going on there. So this is the precipitation over land. What you can see in this during the monsoon, no effect, no effect, but then at very high precipitation, we see a negative effect. And it's the same with the um, July, September catch and the October catch. It's negative effects of very high precipitation. So why might that be happening? Well, precipitation over land leads to um, high runoff from the rivers. And this is a figure from a recent paper here. This is um, the salinity, this is the ocean, red is the normal salinity, this is land, this is Kochi, and this is January, and then we see down to December. And 
the uh, blue here is low salinity. So this is the runoff from the rivers. And this is in July and August. And what you see here are these large plumes coming out from the rivers and affecting the nearshore environment. And it's happening during these monsoon months. And what has been found is that these uh, rivers are, when this high um, river discharge is happening, there's a lot of nutrient offload uh, coming into the near shore, and that can lead to hypoxic events, which drive sardines offshore. The last covariate that improved our forecast was the Atlantic Multidecadal Oscillation Index. And this was actually the only ocean climate index that improved the forecast. This index is associated with the sea surface temperature anomalies in the North Atlantic. It may seem odd that this um, North Atlantic index would be associated with improved forecast. However, there's been recent research showing that this index is correlated with conditions in the Indian Ocean. Please see our, uh, the paper that I gave you a link to earlier where we review this literature. Now, for our case, you could look at the correlation between the 2.5-year sea surface temperature and the AMO, and you can see that it's highly correlated. So it's not surprising, since these are correlated, that they both improved forecast. I'd like to highlight three take-home messages from our work. Number one is to temper expectation regarding forecast. Even our best covariates that improve the forecast the most only improve forecast by 20%. And there's still quite a bit of variability in the forecast. That means there's forecast errors. Secondly, just because an environmental factor is known to impact sardines, that factor will not necessarily improve forecast. You know, there's the life history and the environment and the fisheries interaction. It's complex and it's very easy for direct effects to wash out over time. Also, there's this cost of estimating the parameters associated with environmental factors. And, um, Lastly, there were some covariates that did improve forecast, namely the 2.5-year average uh, sea surface temperature and the AMO and the monsoon precipitation over land. Thank you very much, and I look forward to your questions.